Pavel, and today we're going to talk about NLP techniques for getting more insights from Git commit messages. I'll show you what we can do with Git commit uh, message history to learn more about our projects, team members, or project maturity stage, or even portfolio of the projects. I hope this video would be interesting for the team leads, managers, and HRs who is interested in getting more context about their projects and organization. The use cases which I will be describing here are theoretical. Uh, we will use the open source project for the analysis, but hope examples are close enough to the real processes in software development companies. Before we start, let me introduce myself. My name is Pavel Perfilov. I'm having 15 plus years of experience in fintech. And during my career, I was working as a developer, engineer, project manager, and product manager. I have a master's degree in finance and master's degree in computer science. I'm very enthusiastic about the data engineering and practical usage of the ML. A small disclaimer here, I'm not representing any of my employers and I'm speaking for myself. Again, the examples that I would be showing you are theoretical and the, the projects we would use for the analysis are open source. Feel free to reach me out on LinkedIn and download uh, the notebook from my Git GitHub. Let's begin with the theory. Here are the four building blocks of the classical management. Planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. And four building blocks of the people management. Recruiting, training, evaluating, and motivating. Is it enough to start managing people and projects? It's just a theory, which is missing the information about the culture, environment, missing emotions and sentiments of the individuals. I'll give you a practical example of the problem. Imagine that a software development company is hiring a new project manager, and he gets five projects, which were running for quite some time already. He needs to read and process huge amount of information to get up to speed. Most likely, the main sources of the information would be the business requirements, the project plan, the documentation, and he would need to talk to many people to get the overview. But it might be not colorful enough to get the sense of what is going on in reality. From time perspective, it might take a few months or even a year to get some understanding of people's behavior, get their feelings, get the knowledge about the individual profiles and communication style to become to be efficient in the team. But how to get these insights faster? I'll try to answer these questions in this video and we'll be using an LP. We'll be using one non-obvious data source, which is Git commit messages. Let's look at the Git messages from the angle of different roles in the team. The most of the roles would not use it as a data source. It's too noisy, it's too low level, it's a lot of text, and most people would not be able to extract meaningful information. But the NLP could help with that. From my personal experience, I can tell you that commit messages might produce enough insights for all of the managerial roles in the company. I'll try to show you some examples to prove it. Okay, now we understand the problem, and there is a lot of questions and inspiration, but how we could turn data into the insights. Let's talk about an LP. What is an LP? An LP stands for natural language processing, which helps to turn words, sentences, or any text into the numbers. Well, let's keep the theory as I want to focus on the practical usage. NLP techniques are used for sentiment analysis and categorization of the text. It could tag the data, classify the data, and provide some emotional levels. Here are some Python libraries, which I will be showing you. And there are many more libraries which are not in the scope of the video. Let's begin with coding. Here are the libraries that you would need to install to run the notebook. It's a Python export now the key. I will download the repo on GitHub. It's a pandas. The repo most popular data science library. Take some time to download it. Okay. Let's run the second cell. Let's grab the messages, the commit time and emails. All right. We have a result. In the resulting data frame, we have three columns. As I expect, the shape of the data frame is three 35,000 commits. Let's pre-process the messages. Let's delete the uh, git keywords, CICD keywords, some emails, some HTTP links, and some virtual request messages. We need to make sure that the message and the text is looking good before we start the, doing the sentiment analysis. And also we see a lot of abbreviations here. Talk, talk, yes, one and something else. So it might make sense to clean this up as well. So here is the clean version of the message. We just apply the regex to delete the words that we don't want. 
We also extracted the abbreviations. Here are the longest abbreviation. It seems like the developer was a little bit annoyed, annoyed by the some feathers. Let's start with the descriptive statistics. Here's a chart which is showing you the amount of uh, contributions per year and number of unique co contributors, unique developers per year. This remind me very well the classical product life cycle. So it does look like it was a, a peak and the product has reached the maturity. Let's look at the seasonality, if there is any patterns. Indeed, there is, and the summertime, there is a less amount of contributions. And let's look at the top contributors. It seems there are like about seven top main contributors who is contributing to Cat Assembly. We could extract the word uh, frequencies as well. But so what do we see here? We see not a lot of meaningful words during uh, some words like two, in, four, there is a concept of stop words in the NLP. So the stop word is the words which has to be deleted because it doesn't add any additional information into the sentence. Let's check the stop words. Yes, indeed, there are quite a lot. The words marked as true as stop words. After we deleted the stop words, the vocabulary loop as we expect, as we would expect. Okay. And let's start with the tokenization and lemmatization. This concept basically standardized the form of the message. The, it takes into account the, the NLTK library has built in WordNet Limitizer. You can look at the lexical database from Princeton University and you can search for some words and it would give you the part of speech and the, basically the explanation of the word. It's a pure dictionary. So let's apply the tokenizing functions and tag the words by the part of speeches. And let's try to count the words again, because this would be the more appropriate and more filtered. Yeah, here's the how message look like through the lemmatizing. So it's very standardized. There is no noise at all, pretty much. And here are the most frequent words in our, it does look like a developer's vocabulary. Just to compare the original message versus the lemmatized message. By using some lemmas, we can classify messages as uh, features and as a bugs. Okay. And we can build the vocabulary for the bugs and features. And let's see what are the statistics of the features and the bugs over the time. Here we clearly see that uh, the project kickstarted in 2012. There was a stable period of development in 2020, and in 2022 there was a rapid growth of features. As we are trying to look at the sentiments, uh, the best way of finding the negative sentiments is to search for the bad words. Let's try to find them. Oh yeah, indeed, there are quite a few comments uh, with the bad words. Uh, and there are a few developers who are using um, bad words uh, more frequently than the others. Yep, we can analyze this. I hope uh, in uh, your organization you have uh, a policy around that. But definitely uh, the, the messages with the bad words are looking uh, negatively and they would provide you a negative sentiment and negative uh, emotions after we, we run the sentiment analysis. For sentiments, we would use the same word not dictionary. It has some additional information on the top of the words and the part of speeches. So if we could get some scores, negative scores and positive scores for every single word like that. But as you can see, the negative words include the error, still, problem, difference, and the positive words are well, improving, refinement, and so on. We can calculate the uh, total score and average score per period. As we can see, in after 2014, there was a response of the positive uh, sentiment at this time, ably running. And we can calculate these goals per person per period to see if there is any dynamic. Let's uh, plot the charts. Okay. You see that, some, that the green developer was improving his negative score. There was uh, the orange guy also was improving his score. And we can get some context about the, what people were doing and uh, see and talk to them, or maybe get some more feedback in the organization if you wish. Let's look at the sentiments. There is a one a nice library, which is called uh, TextPop, which is providing you quite nice features and they don't need to write a lot of code. 
to get and extract some polarity and subjectivity. Uh, let's add the polarity and subjectivity fields uh, into our data sets. Here's how it looks like. There's a polarity column over here. Uh, the polarity could be positive or negative. And here is a polarity over the years. It does look like a sinusoid. It's a very interesting pattern here. After 2013, the negative polarity goes down and positive polarity uh, goes up. Likely at this time, the developers were very satisfied of the project. And we can calculate the dynamic of the changes of the polarity. It's red and green. When the features are delivered, the bugs are being fixed. And we can look at the polarity of all the individual contributors. We can calculate the ratio and the ratio of the subjectivity. So you can make a judgment. We can look at the polarity of the oral project per year. And it's interesting to see that the polarity of the box and polarity of the sentiments are different. The features have polarity more positive. It's biased towards the right hand. Let's look at the deep learning models and let's try to get some emotions out of our git commit messages. To, the easiest way is to run existing models and run the transformers. You can get the models from the website Hugging Face. There are a lot of models that's available for everyone and you can download any of these and run it. Let's try to find uh, the model which we, so we search for the model. There's a description over here. There's a 1.5 million downloads. And we can try the API as well. So we have this model, we just download it. It's sometimes the models are very big. This one might be like one gig or something like that. As you can see, it provides us with the attributes of the sentence, provides the emotions like love, annoyance, and anger. Let's sample the, let's uh, make a sample of our data frame because uh, it's too big. It's uh, 35k commits. Let's take just 2000 and try to enrich the messages by emotions with a pre-trained data set. It might take some time to run. I usually on my laptop, I get the results within five minutes. It was running about five minutes. Okay. We got the motions. Here are the top emotions that we get from our 2000 messages. And we can do some analysis further on and create the data and look how the, how is it the dynamics of these emotions. Let's look at the, on the particular examples. Here's the confusion. I think the confusion is caused by the word why. It looks uh, at least in the, in the second sentence. Okay, let's uh, look at some others. Yeah, we can select any. Let's look at the anger. Yeah, the anger probably caused by the slang and the capital letters. The model has to be fine tuned because the git commit messages are very specific. Let's look at the git discussed. Not very clear why the this emotion popped up, but let's look at the dynamics of of our emotions and let's see how they look per developer. Of course, the top per developer as well, neutral in approval. Let's drop the these uh, first two columns and look at the remaining part of the emotions and the remaining part are annoyance and disapproval. Let's look at the how was the dynamics of every single emotion over the time. And you can see that annoyance correlates a lot with the dynamics of the project and disapproval as well. There are not a lot of positive emotions, by the way. Yeah, let's look at the last cycle again. Yeah, in 2020, the annoyance was the top and there was the highest amount of contributions. So yeah, probably developers don't like much of the when, when the periods when the, there's a lot of features and a lot of bugs are being submitted. It creates a pressure on them. And let's look at the uh, heat map graph. Oh yeah, annoyance is the top and disapproval uh, as well. Disappointment a little bit. Surprise. In 2014, there was a lot of surprises. Sadness, anger. Yeah, the, the positive emotions are not very present. And we can look at the dynamics. So that's just a different chart just to see how the scores are growing or uh, failing. Yeah. The next thing that I wanted to show you is uh, summarization. Again, we'll be using the hugging face model. There are a bunch of models and we would use the one of the most popular. Facebook learned the model 
the CNN uh, Daily Mail news. Uh, and yeah, let's see what we would get with the summarization. The idea here is to reduce amount of text that we would need to read. So uh, we would run the uh, summarization function over the text. Uh, if we need to summarize a huge text, which is uh, having a very different uh, context and small pieces, I would recommend you to run it uh, two times or three times. So basically first layer, you run on the original message, then you combine all these summaries that you got, and then you run the summarization again as a second layer. That would improve the quality of the output that you get. And otherwise they would be, the, the outputs might be very messy and not very. Let's run it over there. Let's take a sample. Uh, we'll take one top contributor and 20 last mids. And let's build the, let's enrich, and let's get the summary of every individual message and then get the summary of the joint text. It might take some time to process. Okay. We got the results is individual summaries for every single message. Look at it and yeah, the messages are a little bit more clean and clear. The summary over the last 10 messages combined. So we could see what the person was busy with amount of days. And we can specify how, what, what should be the length of the output message. Okay, here's the results. Yeah, the text look better than it used to be, and there's a nice summary. But again, this model that we were using is the model trained on the news. Let's try to use the ChatGPT API. It's uh, quite fun, and uh, it does provide a nice quality of the summaries. We also can specify what amount of tokens we need to have in output, and we specify the content. Basically, is a prompt request as we will write it to the chatbot. The summary is the, which is like joint text messages over the past. Then I want to change the uh, prompt a little and we see output. We can play with the prompt a little. If I want to have uh, an emotional uh, response, I can make it uh, an ask ChatGPT to make it in a further way, and I can ask uh, if I want to summarize it in a way, in a binary way, what is bad and what is good. And we get the result. The result is very structured. I highly recommend you to try this out on the copy of my notebook and run it over your data. Some insights that you have never seen before. The most of the words of the dev slang are having the negative sentiments. So don't be surprised if you get the horrible scores. Check the original message and check the dates that you get. NLP programming is very iterative, so be ready. Hope my video was interesting. Thanks for Quant42 for hosting me.